so my name is Tyler Zonke, and I'm going to be talking about social engineering with Google Analytics tonight. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I graduated from the University of Nebraska at Omaha with a degree in Information Assurance. Uh, out of college, I started at a large Fortune 200 company on a red team. Uh, and then from there, I now work at a, as a security consultant with uh, Trust Foundry. Uh, in my spare time, I like to run my blog at zonktech.com, and then in addition to that, I like being outside, taking pictures, and riding mopeds. So a lot of you are probably familiar with what Google Analytics is, but for those of you who aren't, it's a platform provided by Google uh, that allows domain owners to track users on their site. So when they got there, how long they've been there, what pages they've gone to, so on and so forth. This is useful for organizations because it helps them decide what content and maybe what products or whatever service they're providing on their website. It gives them some insight into what their users are looking at and then it's useful for them to help make decisions. Uh, it primarily works on the fact that uh, a refer header is sent along in HTTP, so it says, you know, I'm on this page, and you click on a link, and it goes to the next page. Well, that next page knows where you came from, and so Google collects all that information, and then can sort of paint a picture of what a user did while they were there. So inside the Google Analytics portal, um, it looks something like this. Uh, you can see the domains there on the left. Sorry if that's pretty small. Um, you can see, you know, they they got 82 clicks from Google, and while they were there. 84% of them were new users, and while they're there, they spent you know, an average of this amount of time. And that gives you an idea of what sort of information you can derive from it, and that's what people use to make decisions about their website. Um, so I run Google Analytics on my blog, and I've noticed every once in a while you'll get some weird traffic. So you'll get things from like free traffic.xyz or social buttons.xyz or make money online. You get it. Uh, clearly, this isn't legitimate traffic. People aren't coming to my blog from these sites. Uh, so it's spam of some sort. Um, and whenever something like this comes up, I always try to think about if I was a bad guy, what would I, what would I use this for? Uh, how, would I, how would I use this for bad things? And so how could I use this for evil? If I was going to use Google Analytics to do nasty things, I would perform some open source intelligence gathering on a target so the organization that I want to go after. And I build a dossier about what that company does. You know, figure out what their customers are, you know, figure out how they make money, just really try to understand what their business is and why they have a website. And from that dossier, I can start to think about things that they, need, they might be interested in. And this is standard for doing any social engineering attack, is you really need to understand your target, and then you can trick them into doing whatever you want. So after you understand who the target is, you start thinking about things that they would want to click. And in this particular instance, you have to think about things they'd want to click from a Google Analytics perspective, which is a web traffic perspective. And so what that means is that, let's say I want to go after like a retail company. Well, a retail company is probably interested in point of sale vendors, and vice versa. Point of sale vendors are probably interested in retail. So if I wanted to go after a retail company, I would set up a site that looks like a point of sale vendor, and then tons of traffic comes from that point of point of sale vendor site. They're gonna be pretty interested in like, why is all this traffic coming from this point of sale vendor? And you, you know, we can go down the list. If you're a university, you know, if you got linked to an article, it's like top ten colleges in Missouri or what have you. Uh, and after you build that out, the next step is to well, now I gotta add some sort of exploit to the site I'm building whether it be an HTA attack, uh, a credential harvest, or maybe the particular, particular target you have has a cross-site request forgery vulnerability, and you know about it. And so if you can trick someone that's authenticated to that site, you can maybe pull something off. Uh, and maybe you're interested in cross-site scripting, which you can put a beef up on it. Um, one of the things I like to think of, which is that last point about Google Analytics to Google Analytics, since they're already on Google Analytics, if you, you know, get them an interesting domain and they click on it and then they're presented with a Google Analytics logon, they might just type their creds in and you get some free Google creds out of it. Um, so after you set all that up, you then just got to generate tons of traffic to your target site and then hopefully an admin will see it, be interested in it, click it, profit. 
So it seemed pretty viable. Like you know, someone could probably do some bad things with this. So the next question I asked myself is, how are they doing it? And that basically asked both the question of how does Google Analytics work? Uh, when you set up Google Analytics, you get this unique identifier, which is basically um, how Google knows what site it's tracking. And they give you a little snippet of JavaScript that they ask you to put on every single page that you want to be tracked. Typically, people put it in the header or the footer because that's on every page already. Um, and when a user comes to your site, that JavaScript executes, pulls down an even bigger script, and that script grabs all sorts of metadata about the user, how long they've been there, where they're going, how they got there, so on and so forth. Um, and then they collect all of this data and they can start painting a pic paint picture about how, you know, what a user did while they were there. Um, so if I want to do that, uh, so when it pulls all that down, it makes a request to googleanalytics.com slash collect. Uh, so if I want to do that, I have to figure out how that request is made, and there's two options for doing that. Option one is I reverse the JavaScript, and I looked at it once, it didn't look like much fun. Um, option two is Google will have awesome documentation out of the gate, and they do. Um, and the reason for this is, is that with the ever-growing popularity of single-page applications, this whole refer paradigm to build a picture about how a user's acting on the page doesn't work anymore because the page isn't reloading every single time. So they made all this documentation so that developers of these applications can still use Google Analytics in a meaningful way to them. So what I learned is, after looking at the documentation is that there's a certain set of required parameters. Uh, the first of which, and I'm sorry, that is really small, um, is the protocol version, which currently they're on one, so that just has to be there, and it's always just one. That unique identifier we talked about earlier, this is so when they get the request, Google knows whose traffic this belongs to. Um, and then a client ID, which is actually an interesting thing, because this is the unique identifier for each user. Um, and it gets randomly assigned to you, and this is so they can track you from page to page. So they know the user one was here, and then they're here, and then they're here. They can track you throughout the pages. Um, the next is page view, which is the most common type of hit type. There's some other ones like screen view or event view. And it goes back to the fact that Google wants to kind of let people use this to their best bidding. So if you're writing, you know, hitting this, you can choose some different hit types. But we're really only interested in page view. That's the default one. The next three parameters are all about what page you're on. So the host, the path, um, and the title of that page. So they know what page you're on. Um, and then the next thing is what we're most interested in, is that, and that is the document refer, the page you came from. Um, and the last thing was a parameter called anonymize IP, which says when present, the IP address of the sender will be anonymized. Well, I don't know, that sounds pretty good, so we'll just throw that in there. Um, so I opened up Burp, threw a request together, uh, and I said, you know, there's some traffic coming from fakedomain.com. And I sent that off and Google said, okay, and gave me some gobbledygook back. But it was a 200, so it seems good. Logged on my Google Analytics, and sure enough, it says there's a user on my site right now from fakedomain.com. So you can spoof it, that's pretty cool. Um, but it's not really useful in and of itself, you kind of got to be able to do it a lot and really fast, and so that leads to the inevitable, which is automation. And whenever I want to sit down and write something, I'm usually, you kind of got to consider your user and what they're going to be doing, and if it, you know, should it be a standalone thing, or should it go into a framework, and anyways, uh, Social Engineering Toolkit exists, and it's a framework that's all about social engineering tools, and some of the exploits we talked about earlier, like HTAs or credit harvests already exist in the social engineering toolkit. So you're probably going to be there working anyways if you want to pull something like this off. So it makes sense to write a module for that. Hey Tyler. Yes. We have a tradition here at SecKC. What's that? First time you take first time you talk, you gotta take a shot. Yeah. 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 Was it tequila? <laughs> no, I think it's fireball. Yeah. Uh, so my social engineering toolkit sounded like the best thing, um, so that's what I did. 
Plus, it was written in it's Python, which is the best scripting language there, so that made sense. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of the script I wrote. Oh, you did? I'll just hold this. So, uh, let's go over here. So I'm just in Kali Linux. I can make that bigger. All right, so I'm just in Kali Linux. Um, this code is pushed out to the official uh, social engineering toolkit repo, so you should have it if you use Kali Linux. First scale load social engineering toolkit. My module exists in the third party module, so we're going to go there. And then Google Analytics attack. And it's going to pull in some modules that uh, the framework doesn't use, but I wanted to. Um, so I have two modes. Uh, the manual mode basically is what it says. You manually enter all the parameters, which that's not very useful because you have to, you know, it'd be the same thing as making the request manually. So. The automatic mode is what you really want, and what that does is it makes a single GET request to the target page, and from that GET request it pulls out the unique identifier and all the metadata about the page. So I'm going to pull down a page uh, off my blog. We're going to use that. Auto. There's the page. And so right now, that little pause there was it making the get request and pulling everything out. And at this point, uh, if there's any problems getting the unique identifier, any, unique identifier or anything like that, it would, it would tell you that there's a problem. Uh, and the next thing you gotta do is tell the page you wanna spoof the referral from. So this would be your attacker controlled site. In this case, I'm just gonna say setkc.org. So then we have the option to look at the payload, um, which is basically all the parameters, and we'll just take a look. And something I mentioned earlier was that CID, the client ID, is how they track you from page to page. Uh, it's very important that this ID is randomized, because if it's not, it's gonna think the same user is just refreshing the page over and over and over, so the script will automatically change that every single time. So if we hit enter, uh, payload sent, got kicked off. Um, if we come over here to Google Analytics, Sure enough, it says there's a visitor here, two visitors here, and it's from SiteKC. So the next step would be you want to loop it, and for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to loop it for a second. Every second, I'll send another payload. But in a realistic scenario, um, you know, you probably want to do it over the course of a few hours or something, because um, you can. Google is actively trying to stop Google Analytics spam, so if you kind of get too noisy, you'll get in trouble. Um, it's important to kind of consider your target too. You know, if if you're spamming you know, to a page that's really, really, really popular, you can probably get away with a lot more, whereas if you're spamming against some no-name site, you know, if you go like crazy, it's gonna be obvious, so you kinda gotta blend. Is um, it refreshing the CID every time? Yes, when it loops, the CIDs, yep, change it. So there we go. Um, and you can see uh, the CIDs over here, you can see it's changing every single time. But if you come back over here, this is just gonna go. Crazy to take off. So yeah, that's that. Uh, that's the demo. Um, when I first came across this and started thinking about it, it was probably back in September. And uh, let me pull the mic up here. And I blogged about it. I made it, published it on September 25th. Talked about it. I had my reservations about how cool it was. Like, it's kind of interesting, but at the end of the day, it's just making a get request, but it was still cool, so I blogged about it. Um, a few months later, an article like this came out. And immediately, I was like, wow, I did something cool. Like, other people thought that was great. Yes. Um, but what it also told me was that when I set out on this little bit of research I did, I was primarily interested in using it for phishing. Um, but what it means is, is that 
there are other applications. So any decisions that are made from web analytics could potentially be influenced. For example, if there's a website that makes items go on sale because a lot of people are looking at it and not buying it, you could potentially, if you knew that, spam a bunch of traffic to that item and all of a sudden that item goes on sale. Uh, and in this particular case, you know, if you spam a bunch of support for Trump, maybe he'll get elected. So, I thought that was interesting. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, yeah. Does anybody, anybody have any questions? Cool, thanks.